On June 10, 2023, it was reported that a South Korean influencer in her 30s had died in Phnom Penh, Cambodia on June 6, sending shockwaves through the South Korean community. Later, online communities and social media platforms found that the deceased had 250,000 followers, identified the victim as Ayong, a former internet broadcaster from Africa TV, and an Instagram star. How did she end up in Cambodia and get found as a lifeless body? This case involves several Chinese nationals and is riddled with unanswered questions, hampering the progress of the ongoing investigation. Let's delve deeper into the situation up until now. The capital of Cambodia, Phnom Penh, is located between Thailand and Vietnam, but is still unfamiliar to foreign travelers. On June 6, 2023, a decaying body of a woman was discovered at a construction site in a residential area in Kandal province, a 40-minute drive from Phnom Penh. Early in the morning, a construction worker who arrived at the scene discovered a red cloth that he had not seen the day before. It was half submerged on a puddle of water dug to bury a sewer pipe. Something seemed off, so he reported it to the police. When the police arrived and lifted the cloth, the body of a woman was revealed. Based on personal belongings and fingerprints found at the scene, the victim was identified as a Korean woman, Pyonayong. Initially, the identity of the woman was not disclosed, but later a community user who traced the exact details of the deceased revealed that she was Pyonayong a 33-year-old Africa TV broadcast jockey and Instagram star with 250,000 followers. What brought this influencer to Cambodia, and how did she end up suffering such a horrific fate? Pyonayong, who entered Cambodia on June 2nd, was found dead on June 6th, but the estimated date of her murder was June 4th. Later, several strange aspects of BJ Ayong's case came to light. The culprits, who conspicuously abandoned the body in a sewer puddle, did not even seem to make an effort to hide the corpse in the sparsely populated jungle. Furthermore, a friend of Pyonayong, who accompanied her to Cambodia, neither reported her missing nor contacted her family about her absence, and later refused to provide any testimony, citing trauma as the reason. Subsequently, on June 10th, local police identified fingerprints on the cloth wrapped around the corpse and arrested a Chinese couple, a 30-year-old man, Lai Wen Xiao, and a 39-year-old woman, Tsai Hui Chuan, at the scene. According to CCTV, on June 4th, Pyonayong entered a hospital operated by the Chinese couple at 4.10 p.m. and did not come out even after an hour and a half. Later, at 5.52 p.m., the hospital entrance and sign were turned off, and 25 minutes later, the lights were turned back on, and the hospital resumed operations. The couple then rode a motorcycle several times in and out of the store. And then, just after midnight on June 5th at 12.52 a.m., the husband loaded something into a car and drove away. The next day, Pyonayong was found dead. The Chinese couple, who operated a local hospital, said that Pyonayong suddenly had a seizure and died after receiving an IV and serum. In the hospital, which was the size of a small pharmacy, there were no treatment desks, only incomprehensible price tags plastered everywhere. What on earth could be the identity of this so-called hospital? Later, the couple admitted to moving her corpse by car and abandoning it. On June 6, local Cambodian reports said that Pyonayong had facial swelling, fractures in the eye socket, severe signs of beating, burns all over her body, and a suspected broken neck bone. However, local police who initially found the body mentioned that there were no special injuries or signs of bleeding. The Cambodia forensic team who conducted the first examination of the corpse also said that, contrary to the testimonies of the witnesses, no serious injuries were found. 
Experts say the body had been submerged in water and took about 48 hours to be discovered, so it is presumed that there were some changes due to that. The case took a sudden turn from being treated as murder to a medical accident where she had a seizure shock after being administered saline or serum twice. Moreover, Lai Wenxiao, one of the culprits who testified that he wrapped the body in a red cloth and dragged it out into his 2007 blue Toyota Prius, changed his statement during an interview with the Korean investigative team while detained in prison. He claimed that Pyonayong asked for an injection, but she already had injection marks on her body, so he didn't give her one. He said that she then fell asleep, started foaming at the mouth, lost consciousness, and despite administering emergency medicine and supplying oxygen, she died. Lai Wen Xiao, who only admitted to abandoning the body, completely denied all other allegations and claimed that his wife was also innocent. However, his wife went a step further and claimed that Pyonayong injected the drug herself to sleep better. The wife, Tsai Wei Juan, implied that Pyonayong visited Cambodia to secretly obtain the drug. If this were true, there would be no need for Pyonayong, who could inject herself, to visit the hospital in the first place. The testimony did not add up. Experts were puzzled by the serum injection. Serum injections, commonly used for treating malaria and tetanus, involve drawing one's own blood separating the platelets, and then helping damage cartilage, muscles, ligaments, and tendons recover on their own. It was an unnecessary prescription for the young and healthy woman. The reason they denied administering the injection, contradicting their own testimony, is because both the husband and wife were practicing without a medical license. Once it was revealed that they were unlicensed, admitting to administering the injection would immediately lead to punishment for illegal medical practice under Chinese law. Possibly, they're trying to divert attention by introducing injections like propofol and claiming that Pyonayong died of illegal drug use, while trying to escape responsibility themselves. The couple had been charged with murder, and if they are convicted, they could face life in prison. However, if it turns out that it was manslaughter, meaning the death was unintentional, they could receive a much lighter sentence. Notably, the most questionable aspect for Korean netizens about Pyonayong's incident was the fact that she visited a hospital operated by Chinese individuals. The Bokang Clinic, operated by the Chinese couple who abandoned her body, is an illegal clinic that no one, not even a first-time tourist, would want to visit. Although it has been open for only three months, it is so poorly maintained and shabby that even locals may not consider it a hospital. Just a five-minute walk away is a large hospital, Clinic Mekong, and there are many other Korean and large hospitals in the central area of Phnom Penh, where Bokang Clinic is located. Pyonayong was staying at a house of a Korean friend in Cambodia, and it is assumed that she visited the hospital because the friend's husband is Chinese and recommended the hospital they operate. It is a place that Pyonayong, a Korean accustomed to a glamorous life, would have no reason to visit. Even a Chinese individual who once lived and visited the hospital operated by the couple found it strange and questioned why a Korean would visit this hospital, as Koreans and Chinese usually live in different areas in Cambodia. In the end, it is hard to shake off the feeling that this could all be planned or designed by someone. CCTV footage show that Pyonayong's first visit to the hospital was not on the day of her death. On June 3rd, the day before her death, at 11.58 a.m., Pyonayong was captured entering the hospital. Pyonayong, who had visited Cambodia several times, stayed in the same apartment as the couple and seemed to have a close relationship. However, Lai Wen Xiao, who claimed not to know who the woman was and what she did, responded that she came, slept for a while, and just left when asked about her visit to the hospital the day before the incident. It is strange for someone who is not a friend or a patient to visit the hospital two days in a row and just sleep without any other treatment. 
Strangely, Pyonayong's belongings, even a relatively small hair tie, were carefully packed, but her cell phone was missing. Experts pointed out that this was an attempt to remove important evidence and distort the crime. On June 12, despite the Cambodian police's position that an autopsy was necessary to determine the exact cause of death, the family opposed it. However, on the 15th, the family suddenly changed their minds and decided to proceed with the autopsy. Initially, Pyonayong, who was active as a BJ, had quite a few haters, so the family wanted to bury her quietly to protect her honor. But they made a decision for the investigation. The autopsy conducted in Cambodia requires sending samples to a third country for precise testing, as there are no personnel or equipment in Cambodia for detailed examination. The process, therefore, often takes more than a month. Moreover, as of now, they're looking for an Australian or New Zealand pathologist, as there is an MOU signed with Cambodia, rather than a pathologist with Chinese or Korean nationality. So the autopsy has not been conducted yet. At that time, there was only a Chinese man in the hospital, so there was a possibility of confinement, assault, and sexual assault. Lai Wenxiao confidently requested a DNA test for sexual assault suspicions. However, the situation in Cambodia is that they are not actively intervening. It is natural for her families to be anxious, waiting for some progress to be made in the case that occurred in another country, ultimately fearing that the incident will be buried and forgotten. The key point of the autopsy is the composition of the injection administered to Pyonayong, and whether there was assault and sexual assault on Pyonayong who was found without underwear on top and wearing her bottom underwear inside out. And for the traces of assault and beating witnessed, an autopsy must be performed to know exactly. Surprisingly, there are more cases where people were involved with Chinese people in Cambodia and died or were harmed for unclear reasons besides BJ Ayong. A 24-year-old Korean woman from Busan went to a hotel with her Chinese boyfriend and was found dead from a fall. There were suspicious points such as blood stains on the railing and the victim's mobile phone found four floors below, but the body was quickly buried, making it difficult to resolve the questions surrounding the case. Also, in Phnom Penh, there was a case where a Vietnamese woman was confined and assaulted by Chinese people in a building that looked like a hotel. She managed to escape using a makeshift parachute made of quilts and blankets when the attackers let their guard down. What is suspicious is that the distance between the clinic where Ayong is strongly suspected to have died, the hotel where the 24-year-old Korean woman died, and the hotel building where the Vietnamese woman was assaulted was not far. It was a place located in or near Buong Kang Kang. The investigation is slow, and the fact that the Chinese suspect suddenly strongly denies the crime has led to talks among the Korean community in Cambodia that it might be because the Xi Jinping regime in China is favoring the Hun Sen administration in Cambodia, so they expect to receive a slap on the wrist once the heat surrounding the issue subsides. Another reason for the growing doubts about the incident among Koreans is because about a month and a half before Panayong's death, there was another incident in Cambodia where a famous Korean celebrity died after receiving an injection, just like Panayong. On April 20th, 2023, Seo se a famous celebrity and comedian, died of shock at the age of 67 while receiving an intravenous injection at the Mirepoli Clinic, a Korean hospital located in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. After his divorce, he remarried a Hegum player, 23 years his junior, and immigrated to Cambodia with his young daughter. Seo se who also demonstrated his skills in business, entered the Cambodian national broadcasting business worth nearly 3 trillion won and reportedly succeeded in receiving 120 billion won in transmission fees. The sudden news of his death shocked Koreans. It was even more shocking and suspicious that the fact of his death was only known after two weeks had passed. 
The Korean Missionary Society in Cambodia announced it, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the police also officially confirmed Seo Seo-won's death. They said he died of shock from diabetes complications after receiving a nutrient injection. However, the media polyclinic where Seo Seo-won died, and which was quickly visited by Korean media for confirmation, was a hospital that did not even have a business license, with only a sign that was practically in ruins, and the local nurse who gave Seo Seo-won the injection was someone who came for an interview that day. When a reporter asked the nurse what kind of injection did he get, was it vitamin? The nurse answered, propofol. But then an associate of Seo Seo-won strongly denied handling propofol in the hospital. He only offered phrases like, it is not true, and I don't know, when faced with unfavorable circumstances. Although he claimed in the interview that he cooked kimchi stew in the hospital, there were no kitchen facilities in the hospital to cook kimchi stew. Lies were rampant. Contrary to the wishes of the bereaved family who wanted to move the body to Korea for an autopsy as soon as possible, Sasawan's body was removed from the freezer and left at room temperature to decompose, complicating the determination of the cause of death. Sasawan's bereaved family requested a blood test and autopsy, but due to the poor conditions, they were unable to proceed and hastily cremated Sa's body. In the dubious hospital, propofol, which was claimed not to be handled, was found everywhere. It was revealed that in Cambodia, unlike Korea, propofol could be easily purchased without a prescription at a pharmacy. Later, it was discovered that the nurse had administered 100 milliliters of propofol to Sa Sewan before his death. This is at least 10 times the standard dose. And doctors said that if Seo Sewan, who had diabetes, received 100 milliliters at once, it would lead to immediate death. The fact that the nurse, who was unaware of the drug's nature and had no knowledge of its lethal dose, testified that she administered two bottles, thinking it was a test injection, as instructed by a person described as a driver, was shocking in itself. There were suspicions that Mr. Seo's death might have been orchestrated by someone. Even more suspiciously, according to an NBC investigative program, two Koreans had already died under suspicious circumstances at that hospital, making Seo Sewon the third victim. To this day, we still don't know how Seo Sewon died. And then, after about a month and a half, Pyeon Ayong was found dead. There are too many oddities surrounding the case. Given what we know at the moment, it is impossible to dismiss the nagging worry that the freezer containing Penayong's remains could be turned off, or her body could be cremated at any time. Unless sincere efforts are made to uncover the truth, Koreans may continue to die under mysterious circumstances in Cambodia. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.